Welcome and thank you for standing by. At this time, all lines are live and interactive for the duration of today's call. This conference is being recorded. If you have any objections, please disconnect at this time. I now would like to turn the meeting over to Ms. Diane St. Germain. You may begin. Thank you. Hello, I'm Diane St. Germain with the National Cancer Institute. On behalf of the International Society for Quality of Life Research, and the National Cancer Institute, I would like to welcome you to the webinar series titled, Best Practices for Integrating Patient-Reported Outcomes in Oncology Trials. The webinar series is comprised of six webinars, each approximately 45 minutes in length. The webinars are designed to be viewed independently to meet your individual learning needs, or the series can be viewed sequentially in its entirety. Today's webinar is the fifth in the series and is titled, How to Assure Data Quality for Patient-Reported Outcomes in Oncology Clinical Trials, presented by Dr. Carol Moynpour. I will now turn it over to her. Thank you, Diane. Um, I am Carol Moynpour, and I will be presenting the quality control guidelines that Dr. Andrew Bottomley of the EORTC and I from SWOG have assembled for this presentation. Next slide. Our presentation will address the following basic issues. A, a, a T1 is the first one listed on this, uh, this slide, to have parallel quality control procedures for clinical and pro data. Others involve addressing pro outcomes throughout the protocol, linking registration to a study with completion of baseline pro measures, uh, instituting centralized monitoring to have monthly notification of compliance with the pro uh, data collection, providing patient-specific uh, pro assessment calendars, identifying a nurse or a clinical research associate co study coordinator for the pro component, and providing regular training. Next slide. So what do these basics require? So first of all, a very key factor is the protocol itself uh, for quality control of the pro data. Programming and statistics Statistical effort is also important, as we will see below. Central monitoring, um, specialized forms, and then training for the people who will be involved in administering the pro measures to patients. Next slide. All right. Um, incorporating the pro outcomes in an oncology clinical trial through the use of the protocol uh, is one way and an important way to assure good quality pro data. Next slide. So the preparation phase. This is uh, prior to add developing the protocol with a pro, um, um, uh, pro measure. And what's involved is uh, it's very important to seek input from clinicians, from oncology nurses or clinical research associates, uh, and um, regarding the disease treatment specific symptom items that are of interest in the trial and to get their input on, on things that, uh, symptom areas that might be missing. That, and also to get their agreement on the need for, um, including general quality of life outcomes in the, um, for that particular study. And then what about the feasibility of the pro assessment schedule? So again, it's very important to have the input from the people on the ground that were involved in treating patients and involved in this study. So it does assure the clinical relevance and the schedule feasibility by doing this and would lead to better compliance, should lead to better compliance with pro data collection. And then uh, we, we, it is important to uh, identify someone uh, to be the pro study coordinator in terms of being able to answer specific questions about the pro measures. The statistical center review of forms and procedures uh, need to, needs to occur to ensure compatibility with the, the type of data collection and database system and for that uh, particular group conducting this study. 
And an example of this would be the National Cancer Institute metadata rave um, system, which, uh, which pro majors now have to um, be um, addressed. Next slide. So in terms of then the protocol, um, it is important to have the pro measures, the, the pro data addressed throughout the, throughout the um, protocol itself. So next slide. And the basic reason is to ensure or to really send the message that these, the pro data are an important component of the trial. Um, All right, so what needs to be in the protocol? The, the very first area is most protocol list, list objectives, and, and uh, the, so the pro, the pro questions should be specified as primary or secondary objectives. That should be made clear in the objective section of the protocol. In the background section, it's very important to communicate the rationale for pro outcomes. Uh, it, it, this, this indicates the scientific value of collecting pro data in the trial. Is it worth the effort? And so there, the rationale for that needs to be presented in the background. Is completion of pro forms and eligibility criteria? It is best if, that, if the pro measures can, the baseline pro measure can be required for a study registration. And then note the available, availability of any translated forms. Next slide. In the clinical uh, trial treatment arm section of the protocol, along with instructions for treatment delivery and required clinical outcome measures, we, the uh, pro forms and when they are to be administered should be indicated. And, and this is true for the study calendar. So all pro forms should be listed in the calendar showing all the assessment time points. This allows the nurse or, or clinical research associate to see uh, when these forms are due and, and, what's, and what is required. Next slide. In the endpoint and analysis section, the pro outcomes should be uh, indicated again as whether they're primary or secondary outcomes, and then the, um, the, how the, they are being measured and the criteria for determining uh, clinical significance. And then, uh, obviously, then the pro-objective uh, statistical analysis plan needs to be described. Uh, if, if this is a trial with uh, advanced stage disease patients, then the, um, uh, the analysis plan for the pro-measures needs to address uh, the potential for missing data. Next slide. Uh, the, another section of most protocols has to do with data submission instructions, so this should indicate when the pro forms uh, uh, are due and whether or not uh, they are being uh, collected with respect to paper uh, forms or if, if they are electronically submitted. And then there uh, can be, the need, there, if there is a need for a special instructions section of the protocol, the, this uh, can um, give more uh, detailed information about administering the pro forms and, and indicate uh, rules for uh, such issues as if an assessment is missed, what, what should be done. And that includes uh, often indicating the time window for capturing data for phone interviews and, and mailed forms. And then the uh, availability and requirement for any kind of training to administer pro forms should be indicated in this section, and this would be for study staff. And we're going to show an example of this below. Next slide. Uh, references are also needed for the pro forms, uh, for clin and clinically significant benchmarks and the analysis method for the, uh, the, the pro, pro uh, data. And again, this is communicating scientific rigor of the pro data. Copies of the pro form should be easily available to the research staff if they're not in the protocol. And then a cover sheet should be submitted with these forms for each assessment time. And this is something that's completed by the data manager or the clinical research associate. It indicates whether forms are completed or not, and if they're not completed, a reason. And the next slide gives us an example of um, uh, not a cover sheet, but a checklist to, um, to help indicate the completeness of the protocol with respect to the pro measures. And this, um, was, this particular one was developed by Dr. Madeline King and her colleagues uh, for the Psycho-Oncology Cooperative Research Group in Australia. And this next slide. 
And you can see that Dr. King's checklist addresses the areas of a protocol that should mention pros that we've just been uh, discussing. So this allows, uh, gives you an example of one of these checklists that can just be useful in the development of your protocol. Next slide. Uh, programming and statistical effort is very important for this, and it is, uh, it, uh, including PRO measures is, is um, associated with, you know, some degree of effort on the part of, of programming and the statistics and statisticians. So one of the things that has to be done is uh, PRO forms need to be prepared and that are in, in compliance with the, the, the system for forms in that particular uh, group conducting the trial. New data entry programs need to be might need to be uh, 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 produced and or some revisions for um, electronic submission of data. There, this requires some extra time uh, for system-wide requirements for pro data such as metadata rave uh, as part of the National Cancer Institute system. Data dictionaries for the pro measures need to be uh, prepared and programs for monitoring submission of the pro forms need to be established. And then tables for um, reviewing, for viewing the pro data that are compatible with a the therapeutic data system. And then reminder programs, and we're going to discuss each of these below. Next, um, next slide. Central monitoring um, is a, a key um, aid in ensuring the quality of the pro data, and one of the resources um, provi provided by the programming support discussed above is the ability to monitor form submission. And if, if, this, if this is done regularly, one of the things that it helps the um, research staff is to be able to request missing forms at an earlier point in time and, or, or forms with missing data. It also um, uh, it can identify institutions that are, um, are having more problems turning in forms and allows for intervention and, and uh, the ability to help those institutions. Uh, uh, staff are going to be answering questions for the pro forms, and let's see. And then um, the cover sheet. It's important to see that the cover sheet is submitted, and we're going to uh, also see an example of cover sheet on the ne on the next slide. And this is an example of a swab cover sheet for a pro measure. And, and I think some the important there's a very there's important data on this cover sheet. One is the the, the contact information for the person who completed the form, uh, but uh, it also gives reasons for data, for data that were for reasons for forms that were um, uh, not a, not administered, and um, and whether or not assistance was required. In this case, several forms were uh, were were required for this study for patient reported data. Next slide. The statistician and programmers also can um, produce email reminders that um, uh, the, whoever is the uh, is the coordinator, the nurse pro coordinator, would send weekly reminders of upcoming patient assessments to an institution, and they can they can do that only with, in terms of getting this um, getting the list from the central uh, statistical center. And this email will include the nurse uh, pro coordinator role, the reasons for why the institutions are receiving the email uh, for maybe overdue pro forms or anticipated pro forms. Patients um, identified by cooperative group are, are identified by the cooperative group ID number and initials along with forms due and the date due. And the um, it, it also allows some hints to be reminders to be given to uh, all institution staff about uh, when the, the pro assessments for all scheduled assessments are, are uh, uh, so supposed to be collected even if a patient is no longer receiving study treatment. Cover sheets are to be completed and submitted with every set of pro forms. And, and as I said, the nurse study coordinator contact information. The email content it can be revised to address new or different issues associated with a particular trial. In the next slide, please. We still need the statisticians, even with all these quality control uh, efforts, because the best quality control has no effect if the data are missing due to death or deteriorating health. This requires specialized analysis techniques, and, and, this, and these techniques are going to be addressed in a separate webinar as part of this series. Next slide. 
now we're going to uh, talk a little bit about the training of, of those of the research staff who are involved in uh, interacting with patients for pro majors. And uh, the next slide. I am lost. I've lost. Um, I'm not seeing anything on my computer. All right. This is um, uh, the training program that was developed in SWOG as a collaboration between the, um, uh, the nurse oncologist and the symptom control and quality of life committees in SWOG. And the training program, is, it's, as I mentioned, will be um, uh, is designed for people administering the pro measures to patients. It covers many of the issues that we've discussed above, but it needs to be specific to the systems and policies of the clinical trials organization conducting this particular trial that includes pros. Next slide. So in the SWOG, uh, on the SWOG website, this has been the home page, and you can see to the far right uh, uh, in, uh, under a section called Quick Links. The next to the last item is Patient Reported Outcomes Training. Next slide. And then the, the other, and then the, the, on that previous slide, you can click on that and get to the training program. But another way that uh, clinical research associates in SWOG would find it would be they have a workbench called the CRA workbench, and, and under Tools of the Trade that you see on this slide, uh, if we can have the next slide, there are, and, and then the one after that. Next slide. In the, in, under the tools of the trade uh, links that, that help CRAs can, uh, do uh, can, uh, with their data collection responsibilities is the patient reported down at the bottom, the patient reported outcomes questionnaire training module. And so then that's another place that they can click on that link and reach the program. Next slide. So if, uh, viewing the updated 2014 training module, it, it, it's included in the online clinical trials training course for SWOG trials. Uh, there's a revised presentation, which now includes instructions for the submission of pro data and metadata RAVE, the, the, uh, the National Cancer Institute system. New test questions at the end of the training program have been added. There's a certificate of completion for looking, going through the slides. And, and in SWOG, we recommend that all clinical trial staff view, view this revised module. And so it, it's, it's totally a, um, designed for the nurse or the CRA or data manager that, who is responsible for pro data collection. Next slide. Now this is what uh, the, the uh, research staff see when they, when they go over the click the link, the SWOG patient reported outcomes questionnaire, and it's a training module. Next slide. Role of the clinical research staff and pro assessment, it's all about quality. We really need to communicate that message. Next slide. And uh, CRAs and nurses are the critical link between the patient's subjective pro data and the statistical center. Assuring timely and accurate pro data will make a difference for future patients with cancer and those at risk for cancer. And understanding and following the quality control procedures will contribute to the successful completion of the study and then the fact that future resource uh, research will be building on the results of this, these studies. Next slide. And then we, have, we highlight in the training program four key points, the registration period, the methods for pro-administration, the time points for administration, and submission of pro-data. Next slide. And so I'm, uh, we're, I'm giving an example of the data submission um, uh, instructions. Next slide. So the data are submitted per instructions on the CRA workbench. There are a, whole other, a number of other links for this for general data in the trial. And then the protocol section 14 has any protocol specific instructions. Next slide. And then this is a slide in, 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 in informing people that the, that the quality of life forms are, are completed in RAVE. RAVE will list the cover sheet and pros do at each study visit, which is a reminder, a good reminder for the, um, the data manager or the clinical research associate. Next slide. The CRA must first provide paper copies of the questionnaire to the patient for completion at the scheduled visit. The CRA will then transcribe the patient's answers from each questionnaire into RAVE, and then faxing is not allowed for uh, RAVE studies. Next slide. 
So this is, again, a review of the quality control uh, issues that we've discussed in this presentation uh, to um, um, ver verify informed consent. Remember, pre-study questionnaires are required for eligibility. Administer correct questionnaires at the correct time points. Avoid biasing patient answers. Always submit a cover sheet to the Data Operations Center along with the completed questionnaire. So these are, these are emphasized for the, for the data manager. So the summary and, and take home uh, message from uh, this presentation on quality control procedures is that parallel quality control procedures for both the clinical and the pro data. Next slide. And here are a set of, uh, a list of um, references related to quality control procedures uh, for uh, patient reported outcomes in cancer clinical trials, and I hope you find these uh, helpful, and thank you for viewing this presentation.